the exercise solution for chemical kinetics and uh, we are going to start from the problem number 11 we will be doing five problems today so we'll start with the 11th one in this problem they have given a re reaction where 2a plus b is giving you c plus d and we have to find out the rate law and the rate constant and for this reaction the same reaction they have given the Ford experimental observation and from these observation we have to find out the rate law and the rate constant so first thing that we have to find out is the rate law what is the rate law and the what is the rate constant now for knowing the rate law as all of you know the very first requirement is we should know order of the reaction like in our case reaction is 2a plus b is giving you c plus d so we should know the order of the reaction in terms of a and in terms of b only then we will be able to give you the rate law expression that as you know that rate is given as uh, rate constant concentration of first reactant given in the reaction concentration of second reactant and uh, each of them are raised to the power which is order with respect to these component like here for example we are putting alpha and beta so suppose if we are supposing if order of with respect to a is alpha and order of the reaction with respect to b is beta then we can write down such type of rate law expression but here we do not know what is alpha and what is beta so we have to find out alpha and beta from the data given in the uh, uh, table so first uh, we will do it one by one now have a look here in the uh, there are four experimental observation and have a look here in these observation the first one compare the first one in the first one and the fourth one in the first one concentration of b and in the fourth one concentration of b is same so these two we can use to find out the value of a because b is going to be here constant okay so start with the we will find out rate in case of first observation which is equal to rate constant and the values given for the concentration of a and b are 0 0.1 raised to the power alpha as we supposed and 0 0.1 raised to the power beta then we compare it with the rate calculated in case of the fourth fourth observation so divided by rate constant concentration of a raised to the power alpha and concentration of b raised to the power beta now we will put down the value of the initial rate of formation it is 6.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 divided by 2.4 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 as given in the table now here these are the common factors so we will eliminate them and from the leftover part we are left with 0.1 divided by 0.4 whole raised to the power alpha which is equal to when we multiply uh, the values here uh, sorry when we divide the values here we will be getting the value 1 by 4 so uh, as we compare from these two sides we will be getting value of alpha as 1 so this is our first order in terms of a now we will uh, do in the same way to find out the uh, uh, value of beta now compare again in the same manner the second observation uh, experimental observation and the third one in these two the value of the concentration of a is constant so we can find out the value of beta from here so therefore we will be doing the same 
rate in case of second experimental observation rate 2 is equal to rate constant 0 0.3 raised to the power alpha then we have 0 0.2 raised to the power beta divided by then we compare it with the rate in case of third observation so it will be k 0 0.3 raised to the power alpha and it is 0 0.4 raised to the power beta now we'll equate it with the value of the initial rate that is 7.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 in the first case and in the second case it is 2.88 into 10 raised to the power minus 1 as given in the table so when we simplify this kk will cancel out and the, the concentration of a component will also cancel out so we'll be left with the value 0.2 divided by 0 0.4 whole raised to the power beta is equal to after simplification here we will be getting value 1 by 4 here again we are getting 1 by 2 so it is 1 by 2 raised to the power beta and 1 by 4 can be written as 1 by 2 whole raised to the power 2 so therefore uh, your beta is 2 this is order in terms of second reactant or the b component okay so therefore the rate law can be given as rate is equal to k concentration of a rate law uh, the order in terms of a that is alpha is 1 so therefore a and then concentration of b raised to the power 2 order in terms of b component is 2 this is a rate law expression now we will calculate the rate constant from here only we can find out the value of the rate constant as k can be written as rate divided by concentration of a concentration of b raised to the power 2 we will put down the values from any experimental observation like for example we are putting here from experiment number 1 so the values are the value of rate is 6.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 moles per liter per minute we can check in the table this is the value and uh, we will be putting down the concentrations so it is for a it is 0.1 moles per liter for uh, b it is 0 0.1 again moles per liter and we will put down the power 2 so here this moles per liter will cancel out with this moles per liter and answer will come as 6 liter square per mole square per minute this is the value of k so this is our answer rate constant and this is the rate law now come to the second question in second question they are saying that a reaction between a and b is first order with respect to a and zero order with respect to b zero order with respect to b means no uh, any re, uh, rate calculated will be affected by the presence of b and they have given a table in which they have given four experimental observation and they have left some gaps one gap in the second experiment one gap in third experiment and one gap in fourth experiment and we have to fill them so to fill these gaps we will start with the very first experiment why because in the very first experiment they have given the concentration of both the component and they have given the rate so we can find out the value of the rate constant from the very first experiment which we will use later in rest of the cases so So we will write down the rate law expression as uh, from the given information in the in this case so rate in terms of a is uh, uh, order is 1 
and in terms of B order is zero. So this is rate law expression for this reaction and we will find out the value of rate constant. So uh, first for, uh, in case of experiment number one, we can uh, put down the values rate is given as 2.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 moles per liter per minute is equal to rate constant and concentration multiplied by concentration of a which is 0 0.1 concentration of b we can write as 1 it will not make any difference so we are not writing here and k will be calculated as 2.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 moles per liter per minute and this 0 0.1 which is uh, concentration of A it is, it is in moles per liter so we will write down 0 0.1 moles per liter moles per liter moles per liter will cancel out and answer will come as 0 0.2 per minute this is the value of rate constant now we will try to find out the uh, fill the blank in case of experiment number two so we'll consider the second experiment that is your experiment number two and uh, we will put down the values according to the rate law expression we have written here so it is uh, the value the, the rate given in this is 4.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 moles per liter per minute is equal to uh, concentration uh, here uh, they have given the concentration of b which, which is 1 we are not writing it here and the rate constant is 0 0.2 per minute into concentration of A that we have to find out. So concentration of A will be equal to 4.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 moles per liter per minute divided by 0 0.2 per minute. So here concentration of A in case of second experiment will come as 0. 2 moles per liter so this is the first blank answer for the first blank space given in the table now we will do in the same manner for the third blank space here rate is to be calculated so we will do same in case of uh, experiment number three and we'll put down the value so rate is to be calculated so rate is given as 0 0.2 per minute that is the value of rate constant and the concentration of a is 0 0.4 moles per liter concentration of b is taken as one so answer will come as 0 0.08 moles per liter per minute this is our next answer or it, it is the answer for the next blank space now experiment number four for the last one so in the fourth experiment they have given concentration of b and the rate and we have to find out again concentration of a as we did before so concentration of a in this case can be given as the rate which is given as 2.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 moles per liter per minute divided by the rate constant which is 0.2 per minute so we are getting answer as 0 0.1 moles per liter this is concentration of a in in case of the fourth experiment so the answers are our first answer is uh, uh, that is in case of experiment number two this is our second answer and this is our third answer number 13 they have given us uh, rate constant values for 
different reaction and we are supposed to calculate the half life of these first order reaction so half life or we call it as a t half can be given by the formula 0 0.693 divided by k where k is the rate constant this is for any first order reaction so in the very first case t half can be calculated as 0 0.693 divided by the value given which is 200 per second so after division we will be getting the value 0 0.0034 second and uh, this can be written as 3.46 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 second so this is the answer for the first one second one in the second case uh, t half is uh, calculated as 0 0.693 divided by k values given as 2 per minute so it can it will be 0 0.346 minute this is second answer and for the third one t half is calculated as 0 0.693 divided by 4 year 4 per years so here we are getting the value as 0 0.173 years as the half life okay just a moment this is four per year okay so our answer is in the the first one this is the answer for the second one this is the answer and for the third one this is the answer now come to the next problem 14th one in this problem they have given that the half life for a radioactive decay of carbon 14 is 5730 years half life is given for the isotope and an archaeological artifact contain wood and uh, only 80 percent of carbon 14 found in a living tree so originally out of 800 only 80 percent is left in the sample for which the t half life is given as 5730 years so what we have to do first we have to remember that radioactive decay follow first order kinetics So the formula that we have just written for half-life period that is t half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by the rate constant from here we can find out the value of the rate constant so k is equal to 0 0.693 divided by t half now question rises why we are calculating rate constant we are calculating rate constant so that we will find out that what is the age of the sample and we will be using this in the uh, other equation later on so this 693 divided by 5730 years we will not be calculating this we will not simplify we'll keep it like that only later on we will calculate so it is 0 0.639 uh, sorry 0 0.693 divided by 5730 per year okay now the equation that you have to find out uh, to find out the uh, time taken for a particular uh, decay this is equal to t is equal to that is time taken for that particular decay is equal to 2.303 divided by k which is rate constant log of initial amount divided by amount left at a particular time so we will put down the values here to uh, 2.303 divided by value of k we have uh, calculated is 0 0.693 divided by 5730 
and uh, in numerator it will be year log of 100 divided by 80 because they said that in the question that 80 uh, percent is found in the living tree so now here we will be simplifying this uh, equation it will become as uh, 2.303 into 5730 divided by 0 0.693 year log of uh, we can write it as log of 100 sorry log of 100 minus log of 80 because 80 is in denominator so after simplification the first part that is the first term this one we will be getting the value as uh, 19042.1 multiplied by the log value simplified are 0 0.0969 years so after multiplication the value that we will get is 1845 years so this is time taken so this is the answer that is uh, this is the age of the sample now come to the next problem 15th one in the 15th problem they have given experimental data for the de decomposition of uh, N2O5. That is N2O5 decomposed as NO2 and O2. And for this decomposition, they have given in uh, at 318 Kelvin and in gas phase, they have given a table. In this table, at a different time, they have given concentration of n2o5 left okay and what you are supposed to do you are supposed to plot concentration of n2o5 against time you know uh, n2o5 is a reactant therefore concentration of uh, n2o5 should decrease with time therefore accordingly we will be getting a curve where slope will decrease gradually because concentration of uh, and 205 is decreasing have a look in the table here okay in the second question they are asking find the half-life period for the reaction that is from, from once we plot this uh, n205 against t we will be calculating half-life period from that plot only now in the third question they are asking draw a graph between log of n205 and t log of n205 here concentration of n205 is given so log of n2o5 we will calculate ourselves from this equation and we will make a fresh table like for example uh, uh, at t0 in this table they have given concentration of n2o5 equals to 1.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 it is minus 2 here okay moles per liter so when we take log of this value log of 1.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 value will come as 1.79 and have a look here this is the value here that i have written this is 1.79 so in this way we will make a fresh table and we will calculate log of n2o5 in each observation and make a new table for log of n2o5 at different time interval fine simple log has to be taken in this case now the first question come back to the first one that is a plot of n2o5 against time for this plot on x-axis we will plot time like here and the divisions on the graph paper you can take for your simplicity as the same division given in your table it will be easy to locate the point so the markings i have done here in the same manner on y axis we will be taking the concentration of n2o5 
which is given here in this case concentration of n2o5 so we will start from zero value to the higher value in this case that the value will increase in this manner and the uh, time will increase in this direction okay like here the values are increasing this way so we will be plotting the points like for for example i'll show you how to locate one point for the example the very first observation is that at time uh, initially at when t is zero the concentration is 1.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 moles per liter so our first point when time is zero here this is the point so we will be getting this point here and we will locate the first point in this way we will be locating the second point here third point here fourth point here points will not approximately fall on the curve they will be slightly above or lower it's okay fine these are the points that we will get from the table and this is the plot of n2o5 versus time now comes the second part of this question in the second part what you have to calculate in the second part they are asking find the half life period of the reaction we will find out half life what is t half what is t half ta time taken to uh, reduce the original amount to half of it so that is originally we have n2o5 as 1.0 see originally how much we have 1.63 so it is uh, 1.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 molar or moles per liter this is the initial concentration of n2o5 now what will be the half of this half of this will be what 0.815 approximately into 10 raised to the power minus 2 m or moles per liter now from the plot we will find out the time corresponding to this concentration of n2o5 okay so in our graph this value have a look here it is 0.185 this is the value 0.185 so uh, for this the corresponding location on the x-axis will be 1440 second so we will put write down the value as therefore t half t half is equal to 1440 second and this we have find out from the graph itself we have not calculated uh, t half here okay now come to the third one third question you have to draw a graph between log of n2o5 and t and for the plot of log of n2o5 and t this is the table as we discussed that uh, we will make a fresh table we will put down the same division of time and at each time interval we will find out the log of concentration of n2o5 and we will get a new table now in this table what is the problem problem is that here concern log of n2o5 is coming as a negative value so when we are making the plot for this time we will plot in the same manner that is on x-axis we will put down the same division as given in the table for simplicity and we will mark the division but on the y-axis we will not start from zero here we are the uh, the uh, x1 we are starting with 0 but y axis will not start from 0 we will start from a value which is closer to the lowest value of uh, log n205 which is minus 2.46 so we will start our first division with the minus 2.50 okay and as the magnitude of negative value decreases the value of the given quantity increases so we will be moving in upward direction initially we the, uh, in this case we are shrinking the graph we are not starting with zero otherwise the layout will be very big and it will be very difficult to find out the curve or the line whatever we are getting 
so with the lowest value we are taking as minus 2.50 and we will increase the value the magnitude of value is decreasing but the value itself is increasing because all values are negative here so the plot we are getting and in this case uh, approximately we are getting a straight line why what is the reason because it is in this case it is uh, uh, following the first order kinetics and it is the proof that the reaction is following the first order kinetics so uh, this is the answer for the third one that is in the third case we have to draw a graph between log of n2o5 and time and the fourth one what is the rate law now from the given graph we have got a straight line and a straight line is a proof that it is uh, following the first order kinetics therefore so we can write it as plot of log n2 5 versus t is straight line so therefore reaction follow first order kinetics therefore rate is given with the rate law rate is equal to rate constant concentration of n2 5 raised to the power 1 that is first order reaction this is the answer for the fourth question now come to the fifth one fifth one uh, is the last one calculate uh, sorry the calculate the rate constant so calculating rate constant fifth one so we will calculate rate constant from the slope of uh, the line we are getting in this case this is the line and the slope of this line will give us the value of k so slope of line is equal to minus k divided by 2.303 now we will put down the values have a look here the initial value in the table that we have taken initial value in the table is uh, this one the lower value minus 2.46 and the higher value is uh, minus uh, 1.79 but here we will not look into the lower and sorry the lower and the higher value here we will uh, consider the initial value and the final value so we will not consider lower or higher we will consider the initial so initial means when t is zero that value has to be taken as the initial one and in the last interval of time whatever is the value is the final value so we will put down the values accordingly it will be minus 2.46 minus minus 1.79 as we have given in the table or we can see from the graph also you can find out from the graph but for your simplicity i am giving you values from the table because we ourselves have have calculated the values in the table okay so this value the last one and this one initial one we have taken to find out the slope and initial time is obviously zero and the final one is three two zero zero which is the final time slot given in the table so it will be the after calculation and simplification we are getting minus 0 0.67 divided by 3200 and uh, if we will equate it with this one the first one so it is minus k divided by 2.303 from here we will calculate the value of k so k is equal to 0 0.67 into 2.303 divided by 3200 here minus minus will cancel out and we will be getting the value 4.82 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 okay and the unit will be per second because first order kinetics here now the last one the sixth uh, one which we have to calculate what they are asking in the sixth one six is calculate the half-life period from k and compare it with uh, the b sorry the second one this is not b this is from the second one okay this one the value we calculated here so we will calculate from here t half 
is equal to 0 0.693 divided by k k we have calculated here so we will put down the value 0 0.693 divided by 4.82 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 per second so t half will come as 1438 second okay so this is your answer from here t half this t half we have calculated this is the calculated value okay this is calculated value and uh, have a look here the in the previous one which we have done from the graph uh, the other value this is the one this is t half calculated from the graph so the values are very close to each other approximately the same this is for today